みなさまおはようございます。So good morning to you all. So I am in charge of the public relations at the Hands on Tokyo.、Uh, my name is Tomoko Ozaki. Thank you for participating today. The time has come to start the Global Volunteer Month kickoff event. So today、uh, we have、uh, Japanese and English、uh, simultaneous、uh, services provided. And you can either、uh, choose from three channels、uh, Japanese, English, or no translation. You can use Zoom simultaneous translation button if you are in need of any kind of t h e s services.、Uh, the simultaneous interpreters helping us are Hiroko Kodera and Nobuko Tsutsui. And please mute your microphone as you participate in this session. So, the,、uh, today's、uh, topic is stepping out volunteering, get to know our community partners. And each of our community partners will give us their、uh, presentation to showcase what their activities are. So, now I give the floor to the, our executive director at the Hands on Tokyo,、uh, Harumi Kachi, to introduce us、uh, regarding the activities of Hands on Tokyo. The floor is yours, Harumi. Thank you for the kind introduction. And good morning to you all. I am the executive director of Hands on Tokyo. My name is Harumi Kachi. And thank you for waking up early on a holiday s weekend morning to join us. And this is the、uh, Global Volunteer Month. And this is the first time that we are holding this event.、Uh, this April will, was designated as a, a global month,、uh, the Point of Light Foundation, where we are. An affiliated organization to, and as they are executing a, a global、uh, volunteer month, so this is our global volunteer month as well. And we want to roll out various kinds of activities to celebrate this month. So today, we call these people community partners, the facilities and organizations, the representatives of who, whom will、uh, showcase their activities. And、uh, give us presentation on what they are working on. And thank you for participating despite your busy schedules. So, first and foremost, let me walk you through what we do at Hands on Tokyo. So, we are an approved NPO corporation, and our mission is to provide a setting in which meaningful volunteer activities that Addresses the needs of the community can be pursued in Japanese and in English language. We aspire to contribute to the society, spread the spirit of volunteerism, and develop future leaders as we make this happen. We aspire to create a society where the individuality of each person is empowered to shine and people reach out to and support each other. So, Uh, we were founded in 2006. We started our activities there. In the year 2009, we were recognized as a non profit organization. In 2007,、uh, Tokyo Munis Metropolitan Office certifi certified us as an approved specified NPO. So, our unique features are we offer volunteer programs both in English and Japanese languages. and Community partners, we call these people,、uh, facilities and organizations. We have a, a periodic、uh, hearings from these people to become a very close partner to them. And that's how we work out our activities. And we are an affiliate of the Points of Light Foundation based in the United States. And in various countries, In 37 countries, hands on so and so,、um, in different names, we have affiliates in different countries, nonprofit affiliates. In Japan, the concept of volunteer,、uh, after, especially after the massive uh, 2011 uh, great. East Japan earthquake,、uh, people became familiar with this、uh, definition. We want the volunteer activities to be something、uh, 
part of our daily lives and something that is natural and it is a matter of course. That's what we aspire for. We want volunteerism to be as close as possible to us. So somebody around you, uh, somebody who you know very well, uh, all of a sudden has become underprivileged, has uh, suffered poverty, or all of a sudden has become aged and has uh, and has uh, met this uh, very rare, uh, difficult disease, incurable disease, and have sustained a a disability. And have you ever thought? of uh, reaching out to each other, considering that it's it's also your problem, that you own this problem. And uh, we are, uh, we'll run through very quickly uh, the activities uh, through the photos that we showed to you uh, to so that you can understand these problems as if they were your own problems. And maybe uh, something that is very close to you, some activities that would be very close to you, and you might feel familiar with these kind of activities. Maybe this is something that is doable by myself. Maybe I can manage this. If you can, uh, I hope you can feel so. So this is uh, what we do, uh, children's and youth in needs. We work with children's home and graduates of children's home, uh, special needs, elderly, senior homes, and also in the sustainability environment, uh, especially we... Uh, the Arakawa River, a uh, river cleaning, uh, Arakawa Clean Aid Forums, uh, Mr. Imamura will be speaking to us today. We also have focus on the environment and the sustainability. And there are various programs that are being rolled out. And uh, I won't go through everything in the interest of time, but um, there are various activities rolled out by yourselves. And I will show you, seeing is believing you I will show you the photographs in the uh, children's homes. Uh, we spend time and we cherish the time that we spend with the children to build a relationship with these children. And so we have this kind of uh, periodic uh, activities at the children, regular activities, scheduled activities. And we sometimes do cooking. Uh, this is a professional uh, cook who uh, teaches us uh, how to uh, and she volunteers to teach us uh, cooking. And due to COVID-19, uh, children, uh, graduates of children's homes who has become uh, underprivileged, uh, we uh, provide them care package program for the youth in need, uh, graduates of the children's homes and special needs. We work closely with the people who who have special needs and we have a, a schedule. Uh, we meet them periodically. An MDP, uh, Motor Development Program, Hino-san will talk about this. We exercise with them, calisthenics, and uh, we work, sing together, we perform arts together, and also special needs. Uh, today, uh, the Aiko Gakuen principal is talking to us. Uh, we do a, a, on a volunteer basis, cl do cleaning at Aiko Gakuen. Uh, and also a uh, PC program uh, is executed at Aiku Gakuen, also part of the volunteer program. And this is for the seniors, citizens' uh, homes. Uh, before the uh, COVID-19, we would visit them and uh, conduct our volunteer activities. But these days uh, we do things on an online basis. Uh, we connect with them remotely for calisthenics and exercise and uh, uh, for every season when there are cultural events, we send them. Um, there are volunteers who are very good at uh, arts and crafts, and she or he forms a group to uh, for, uh, to and send the, these ornaments uh, to be decorate to decorate the facility uh, every season. And this is a sustainability environment. And tomorrow there will be a Arakawa cleaning uh, tomorrow. So if uh, time allows, uh, please do uh, join us. This, we have uh, the Clean Aid Forum. Uh, we ask uh, tomorrow and the 29th of April, uh, we, we've asked the uh, Hands on Tokyo people to join the Arakawa Clean Aid Forum. Youth Empowerment, uh, Youth Impact Group, uh, the uh, up to uh, child, people on, in their 20s uh, form a group to uh, conduct their activities. And for the first time this year, uh, we will hold uh, a youth summit 2022 on the September, on 25th of September at Midtown 
Tokyo. And uh, youth, at the Youth Summit, we have about 50 youth members who have subscribed, who've signed up, and they are divided into 10 teams, and they choose uh, one out of four areas uh, where, which they have interest in, and they have already uh, started their activities. And we can still solicit, uh, invite people to join. So uh, if you have any uh, group or topic that you are interested in, and if you're youth, uh, you are more than welcome to join. So this is the figures before the uh, COVID-19, before COVID-19, every year, 800 projects uh, and annually uh, we have been uh, carrying out about uh, 802 projects uh, every year so again this is in the special needs area in order to aspire uh, to realize an inclusive society and this is the sixth year uh, that we have uh, put together this uh, project called lives project and uh, Hands on Tokyo has been uh, supporting, organizing this event. Uh, we want to uh, aim, aspire a perfect, inclusive society. As the logo says, uh, we work, eat, and laugh together, where every individual is empowered to work, eat, and laugh together. So every year in September at Midtown Tokyo in Roppongi, we have this uh, thousands of invite we invite thousands of people to uh, host this kind of uh, event and this is the figure from last year i'm showing you the photos from last year uh, outstanding um, celebrities will take part and paralympic athletes take part in this kind of program and and also Tojisha, the interested persons, persons concerned who have the uh, disabilities will, uh, will uh, come to the podium and speak to us. And we may also have entertainments like Youth, Youth Summit on 25th of September. On the same day, we will be holding this live Tokyo. So uh, please mark it on your calendar and make sure you join us. So we really look forward to having you register as our volunteer. And we, we hope that um, you feel that volunteer is can be a casual experience and that it's easy to sign up and uh, uh, please be a part of us so that you feel that volunteer is something that is uh, close to you. It's uh, embedded in your daily lives. So thank you for this uh, introduction. So at this point, um, I give the floor to uh, somebody who will be talking about the children's home, uh, facility manager, Mr. Sato Kohei, Kohei Sato, who, who is the facility manager at the Kibo no Ie. The floor is yours. Good morning. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And thank you to Hands on Tokyo and volunteers. And thank you for the home appliances that you gave us for the graduates. They really like it. And thank you to all of you for listening to me early in the morning. I'm a facility manager at a children's home. My name is Sato. Right now we have COVID, um, two positives and 11 close contacts, so I'm wearing a mask. So it's been really a two years for me um, being a facility manager. And children's homes, and it's a uh, institution based on children child's welfare law and we have other institutions as well it's called um, social care when children are brought up in institutions so social care 
do you know how many p- children are brought up socially in Japan? Yes, about 45,000 children are brought up in the social care. So there are different types of social care. There are two different ones. One is home care, like in foster parents and family homes. The other is institutional care, and that includes children's homes. There are some you may not be familiar with. So, there are different types of social care. One is children's psychotherapeutic s facility or children's self reliance support homes. These two types of homes they have schools within their facility. Because children have committed o f f e n s e and they need special care, so it's difficult for them to go to schools. So, number of institutions and number of children in those institutions. So, children's homes, there are 612, and the psychotherapeutic facility, 50, and also there is、um, one for mother and child. So, today I'm going to talk mainly about children's homes. As I said, about 45,000、um, children are brought up socially, but、uh, 24,000 are in children's homes. So, that's 56%. Percent of all children brought up socially. And about 60% of the children come into children's homes because of abuse. But when it comes to the experience of being abused, most children have that experience. And 98% of the children have p a r e n t or parents. Children's homes started mostly after the war when children have lost their parents. But now,、um, children do have parents, but they are still in children's homes. Now, This number, 205,029 cases. Have you heard of this number? Maybe you have because it's in news. These are the notification of abuse in one year. Every year it's been growing. In 1990, it was only 1,000. Now it's about 205,000. And in spite of the less number of children, there are social reasons. There are different a w a r e n e s s among Japanese. And also, there is now a special telephone number dedicated to notification. And also, social environment has changed.、Uh, 
and also because of the law、uh, change,、uh, it's now prohibited to hit children. Now there are four different types of abuse. Physical abuse, that's increasing recently, because、um, there are domestic violence, and so physical abuse towards children is also increasing, and also. Police is more intervened. Police notify the children's welfare office of these abuse as well, and sexual abuse. The percentage is very low. However, the influence on children is quite severe. Now. This two point six percent. This is out of the abuse notification. Only two point six percent are institutionalized. Temporary institutionalization is fifteen point six percent. So. Eighty-five percent of the children, even though they are temporarily protected, they go back to homes. So most children go back to their families, but only two point six percent are in children's homes. So in some cases. Children's homes are better for children. However,、um, children's homes are full. Even temporary protection facilities are full. So this two six point two point six percent, you will see that、um, it's really a minority of children who are protected. Once they are in children's homes,、um, uh, some go back to their homes. It's called、uh, family integration, but、uh, really, few children go back. As of end of March,、uh, four have graduated from our. Children's home. However, there were none of them who went back to their families. So, abuse from guardians who should protect children. This will really affect children's lives. One is the influence towards brain, and that is the prefrontal cortex. This is a really important part for social life. However, the prefrontal cortex tends to shrink after abuse. Very difficult for children to spend lives in social society, and also there's PTSD, and also、um, there are children who have the attachment disorder, and in our homes there are children who have. Multiple personality disorder. Some have like fifteen personalities. In the past, we haven't seen those children.
You see this pyramid. It's called Maslow's Five Step Theory of Desire. Once your basic、um, desire is met, you tend to、uh, try to satisfy other desires. But children, children's homes, children, they had they were not、uh, met in the basic or safety. Desires. It's difficult for them to actualize their self desire. Now, sorry for another number. Thirty nine point four percent. This is the number of children who have disabilities in children's homes. These are the different types of disabilities, and so it, there's an increasing number of children with disabilities. So, and it's difficult to raise children with disability. So that's another reason for abuse. Now let's talk about the graduates. I thanked you for giving us the present for the graduates. The graduates are in very difficult situation. We have to take care of the graduate that is stipulated in the law. But、uh, we're so busy taking care of children in children's homes and institutions. Every year, two thousand、um, children graduate from children's homes. As you can see, these circles: admission care, in care, leaving care, after care. They overlap, and we feel that、um, the result of in care leads to the after care. So we need to build good relations while they're in our homes. So that we can take care of them after. This is the survey conducted、um, against the graduates. This survey was conducted in March twenty twenty one. You can see the difficulties faced by the graduates. The percentage of children who answered this survey was only fourteen point four percent, but even with that low rate, you can see that some children cannot go to doctor because they don't have money, and other difficulties. This is another survey conducted for graduates. This was conducted by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government in twenty twenty two. Only about twenty percent answered the questionnaire. The、um, children's homes must、uh, put, cooperate with this survey. But most of the children's homes, they've lost their graduates. They don't keep up with the graduates, so they cannot send the questionnaires. So I think children who have lost contact with children's homes, they're even in more difficult situation.
This is what the graduates、um, do after graduating, and you can see that in homes,、um, ordinary homes, seventy percent of the children go to higher education. However, in children's homes, some homes say. We would not let the children go to higher education. So there is some kind of discrepancy or gaps among children's homes. So some some homes say they give up taking care of children, and we have to do something about this because legally these children should be protected. So we find that they're in a very difficult situation. Now, at age eighteen, they have to graduate. However, now there's extension measures; they can stay until twenty. And there's also a new project for self-reliance support. They can stay until twenty-two years old, and there are even some talks about、um, disregarding the age, so that they can stay when they need to. However, it's difficult because the children's homes are full. So. Children's、um, welfare office. They don't admit children to return. So some children are returned to homes even when they need to be in children's homes. So that's the social reason. Okay, this is the last slide. So the ideal of social care is to nurture children、um, by the society, and I hope you could understand the difficulty faced by the children in children's homes or their graduates. Thank you. Sorry for taking long time. Thank you so much. Let's see if we have any questions to Mr. Sato. We can take one or two questions. Thank you for your talk. This is Takagi from Hands On Tokyo. So I understand the difficulties faced by the children, but today I learned that、uh, graduates also have difficulties. So what can volunteers like us? Can we support the graduates? Thank you. So, Hands On Tokyo、uh, give give us some presents for children.、Uh, is it for like ten children? I think the box includes daily、um, products and food and so on. And we can bring those gifts to the graduates, and when we bring the present, 
we can talk with them. So the graduates really look forward to your present. So that is very much appreciated. And also, we would like you to come to the, our children's home and see the children while they are in our home, because children, they a lot of them say when they grow up, they want to become the staff at children's homes, because they feel. That is、uh, really close to them, but you know, society really has more options for them. They it should, and I want the children to see other adults. They I want the children to come in touch with different adults, so that they see other. Role models. With COVID, it's difficult. So your activities are all online. But when the COVID is over, I hope you will come to our home. Thank you so much. Yes, we would like to come and、um, play with the children. Thank you so much. Thank you. So now we move on to the environment area, NPO Arakawa Clean Aid Forum. We have Mr. Imamura. Thank you. Hi, 皆さん声聞こえますでしょうか。大丈夫ですかね。So, um, can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Great. はい。えっとちょっと画面共有いたします。So I will share the screen with you. はい、今画面出てますかね。So can you all see me? はい、OK です。あの、そうです。私あの、NPO 法人アラカワクリエイトフォーラム。So、uh, I am a director and office manager of アラカワ River Clean Aid Forum NPO Corporation。川のゴミを拾ってですね、25年以上生活している変わった NPO なんですけど。Around the river and river basin for more than 25 years。で今これあの写真出てるのわかると思うんですけど、and, uh, and, uh, これあの沖縄県のあの宮古島の、so, uh, で砂浜の写真です。で、uh, であの写ってるの何かわかると思うんですけど、so、are... プラスチックゴミとかこういうあの軽コントですね。And, uh, あの赤がわかります。これあの妻と新婚旅行で行ったんですけど、ゴミの写真ばっかり撮ってたらですね、あの妻が非常に怒ってですね、なんか、こうサンドの飯よりあなたはこう海ゴミが好きなのねみたいなことを言われて、あのこの時のまあ似たような顔をちょっと今写真であげたんですけど、こんな感じでいつもあの仕事ばっかりして怒られています。妻と息子も職場に来てて、そっちの部屋にいるんですけど、この写真出したのは内緒にしてます。で、あの私、もともとウミガメの研究者でした。で、あの、この中に、あの、砂浜のいい環境を見られないために残すにはどうしたらいいかっていう研究をしていました。これ、カメラのブロックの後ろにはまってしまって、でこれ、かけてるんですよ。100キロぐらいある。The cement、uh, blocks, and、uh, I'm just trying to say that this、uh, turtle it, it, it weighs like 100 kilograms. で、これ、えっ、ー、と、ウミガメからなんでウミゴミに行ったかっていうのは、そ、uh, のウミガメから、ね、uh, to, uh, sea garbage, ocean garbage, まあ、同じ、ナハマを使うっていうところで、ナハマを残すってところにも行っていました。Nice, uh, beach, uh, で、これからの海ゴミ問題ですね。あと川ゴミ問題の現状を伝えていきます。で、uh, uh, 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 uh
えっと、最近あの太陽ゴミとかマイクロプラスチックっていうあの社会課題聞いたことがある方が多いかと思います。で解決しようとしたときにテキストで書くとすごく簡単で、発生現対策っていうものと、早期回収っていうものが必要になります。で発生現対策を出さないにしようってことが分かりやすいんですけど、早期回収ってのは、early, uh, もう今自然界に出てしまってるゴミを回収してやろうっていうことなんです。Uh, now, you, you the the これどうそれしないとどうなるかっていうと、こんなふうにマイクロを買ってきて、細かくなったプラスチックになっていってしまうというところです。で、うん、これ実際にあの荒川の写真で、明日製造するところの海岸で。ね And you see all these microplastics in the water. And so we try to clean and we get to clean up after a while. But a month later, when you come back, all the garbage is washed ashore. And that's the current situation that we really can't change. So this is Arakawa River. So if you look at the soil, it looks like this. Arakawa River is like this. Arakawa River is like this. So the Arakawa soil, this can be designated as a plastic soil, but it's actually a beautiful soil. There are so many plastic powders that go into the soil. It looks nice and it could be designated as a treasure of a Of, uh, of the government? No, I'm just joking. That's not true. And, um, so this is the garbage issue. It goes beyond the boundaries, national boundaries. So the garbage、uh, just travels around the world. Today, many people are participating from different backgrounds. And so many people are participating from different backgrounds. And so many people are participating from different backgrounds. And so many people are participating from different backgrounds. And so many people are participating from different backgrounds. Becomes universal. It's the garbage of the world. So, the Japanese garbage will, go,、uh, will drift、uh, all the way to the、uh, North American continent. So, we have to understand it's your own problem. The, when the currents are slow,、uh, maybe you may have heard the、uh, ocean garbage patch、uh, in the where the currents are slow in this great Pacific garbage patch is formed. So, and the current are slow in this great Pacific garbage patch is formed. The floor space of this、uh, garbage is, is almost the size of a、uh, North American continent. And Japan is still being understood as a clean country, but if you、uh, explore the、uh, ocean garbage patch on the Pacific,、uh, 30% was、uh, Japanese garbage accounted for 30% of this、uh, garbage patch. で皆さんが多分30年後ぐらいに見る海の姿がこちらです、ね。これは白の全部プラスチックゴミです。で、えっと、浮いてるゴミまだ回収できるかなと思うんですけど、沈んでいくんですね。これは深海6000メートルにある何かこう白いものなんですけど、これは拡大すると分かると思うんですけど、マネキンの頭って分かりますかねこれが6000メートルに1990年にあって、1992年にもう一回見に行ったらまた同じ場所にありますよって言ったんですね。これですねあの、so、プラスチックって分解はされるんです。ただし、数百年かかる。だけど、深海に行くと生物も少ないので、さらにこう、多分数千年レベルであの分解までに時間がかかるという状態になります。でまあ、こうなる前には早めに回収しなきゃいけないよねっていうのがあの見込み問題の一つの、えー、特徴になります。The characteristics of marine garbage is that before the plastic becomes this much, we have to collect it as early as possible. So, those people who are in the country, have you ever thrown a single use plastic in the ocean? Have you ever thrown a single use plastic? 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 
若い人にあのこうパン食べながら自転車乗ってて袋飛んでいっちゃったって話がよくあるんですけど、まあ、そういうところでいろんな人が関わっていたりとか、あとはあの、えー、と車のタイヤ、走るために出てしまったりとか、あと靴のこの裏ですね、もう全部プラスチック、プラスチックごみでまあありとあらゆるものがあのプラゴミになっていくいところです。あと、そういうものが台風とか大雨で、今、写真でように川に流れていく、海に流れていくという形であります。その他にも、あの、こんな形で、えっと、ゴミちゃんと捨てたんだけど、カラスが、えっと、こう、繰り返してしまいましたみたいなところも、あの、理由になってます、ね。で、これ、あの、えっと、北西ハワイ諸島のコアホードの親がひな鳥に餌をあげてるんですけど、北西ハワイ諸島のコアホードの親がひな鳥に餌をあげてるんですけど、餌はよく見るともうプラスチックあげちゃってるっていう、まあ、結構皮肉みたいな話なんですけど、子供たちの成長のために餌を一生懸命取ってきてプラスチックをあげちゃっているっていうのがあってですね、まあ、これがかなりこう排泄できずに、あの初,初期原毛って言ってあの、ある程度は死んじゃう鳥もいるんですけど、プラスチックは影響で死んじゃう鳥もいますよっていうのあの現実です。これあの、ビール飲んだ時にケースしてる人いないと思うんですけど、あの、海に流れたケースが海ミガメにはまっちゃったよっていう事例です。これ最後はあの、海ミガメ助かりました。見つかった。その他にも、私たちが魚を食べるときに、魚を取った網ですね、遠洋漁業とかで、ほとんど実は海,海中投棄されてます。捨てられてます。あのボロボロになってきて、直すのにも手間がかかるし、お金がかかる、捨てるのにもお金がかかる、じゃあ海に捨てちゃえばいいじゃんっていうところで、実はほとんどの,あの大きな、いい考えたものですね、捨ててしまっているという現実があります。これはあの不都合な品質で当たられていない。こういうような問題がこう積み重なってですね、あのゴーストフィッシングといってですね、あの漁業の網とかにこう他の生き物が絡んでしまったりとか、あの人間が別に取ってないのに網にどんどん魚が入ってしまって死んでしまったりという、そこにもつながっていく。まあ、大体皆さんがどれだけこう1週間にあのプレスチック食べてますかっていうところなんですけど、えっと、食べてきましたか今日皆さん、プラスチック元気に。おいしかったみたいな。あるかもしれないですけど、大体1週間でクレジットカード1枚分5グラム食べてると言われています。皆さんがよく使っている iPhone の Apple さんも最近クレジットカード出しますよってことで、これ、海よくないですよって言ったら、大丈夫です、うちは機関性で作ってますって言って、さすが Apple だなと思ったり。であとあのアメリカンエクスプレスさんだと、海ごみを回収して作ったクレジットカードを作り始めていたりとか、いろんな動きがあると。貝ですね、シェルフィッシュなんかだと、水を浄化しながらこう餌を取っているので、プラスチックの粉ももちろんこう浄化してくれていて、それを最後食べるのは人間ということで、大体。年間 100, 100匹ぐらい食べると、あの1万粒ぐらいプラスチックを私たちが体に入れて通してるような感じです。もちろん食卓にもプラスチックごみが入っているという感じです。で何が怖いかというところなんですけど、あの大体 99% 体の外に出てしまうんですけど、プラスチック油の仲間なので、有害な化学物質を吸着しやすいんですね。で、それが、えっと、体内に入った後、再び有利って言って、離れて、こう、臓器なんかに溜まっていった時に、何か問題があるかもしれませんよって。で、今の濃度だと今のところ大丈夫なんですけど、まあ、将来どうなるかはわからないって言われています。でプラスチックはあの非常にいい道具ですね。あの軽くてあの上級のところもあるので、まあ、こう使い方を気をつけて私たちやっていかなきゃいけないので。でど,どんなにいい道具を使うのも人なんだよって言って、まあ、彼がよく言ってるんですけど、えー、と道具の使い方は私たちも気をつけていかなきゃいけないよねというところになります。はい
、ちなみにこれ、あの、第7巻見ると、ドラえもんが、ロゴスターが結局人間だからねと言ってるので、まあ、ぜひ見ていただけるといいかなという。で、さっきあの、プラスチックいい道具ですよねって言ったところなんですけど、えっと、食品ロースの話で最近皆さん聞かれると思うんですけど、食品ってこう、鮮度保持フィルムっていうものをかけると、だいたい 1.5 倍から4倍ぐらい長持ちするっていう事実もあるので、まあ、使うときには使って、使わないときには使わない、過剰放送をやめるとかですね、そういうところに進んでいかなきゃいけないなというところになります。あの、一方的に魔女狩りみたいにしてはいけないので、まあ、よく私たちも考えなきゃいけないというとことで。冒頭にカチさんからの身近に気軽に当たり前にボランティアができる社会にあのなるといいよねという話をされていたんですけど、ゴミ拾いってまさにあの身近にできるところで、明日わざわざ川に来なくても、実は家の周りに掃除するだけでもあのボランティアになりますで。あと私たちもあの荒川ブラックスさんという謎の YouTube チャンネルを作っているので、開発をしていますので、これ、チャンネル登録するだけでなんとボランティアになるという素晴らしいものになりますので、あの荒川ブラックス検索してぜひあの YouTube もチャンネル登録いただけたらと思います。いずれにしろ明日あのお越しになられる方もしいらっしゃったらお待ちしてますのでぜひよろしくお願いします。はい、私から以上です。どうもありがとうございました。では何か質問のある方。<笑>あでは、じゃあ、私から一ついいですか。So、I have a question. あのじゃあ具体的に、そう、to be specific, what exactly should we be doing?So, <笑> sorry, this is a very.、Um, so, in terms of、uh, cleaning,、um, on the days when the, there's raining or not,、uh, How much garbage comes into the river? So, on, on a rainy day, 90% of the garbage comes into the river because,、uh, because of the water. If the typhoon is coming soon,、um, all you have to do is clean around your house、uh, so that an excessive wrapping. So, you can、uh, send letters to the corporates、uh, or websites、uh, can, will solicit your opinion.、Uh, please stop、uh, excessive wrapping.、Uh, So, minimum wrapping and,、uh, and let the consumers choose and, and、uh, also have an option,、uh, optional uh, product. So, there are many things that you can、uh, search and do, and that's also a volunteerism. Thank you for your response. Well, maybe I can do that if it's that easy, if it's that simple. Thank you for your feedback. So, at this point, I would like to ask the speaker from the special needs,、uh, from the special needs、uh, school, Aiko Gakuen Principal Oha Taro, Dr. Taro Oha, Mr. Taro Oha, the floor is yours. Hello, this is Oha. Thank you. I am not good with PC at all. So, I wonder if you can hear me. So, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk today. I was listening to the previous speaker. I love turtles.、So、I'm from Tokushima, and there is a city called Anan City and a town called Hiasa where、uh, there are red turtles. And、um, I was convinced that、um, the beautiful ocean is kept because of people's effort. So I really learned that. And so the sea is not naturally beautiful, but it's、uh, people's effort that m a k e it beautiful. So I will look at the sea again with those fresh p e r s p e c t i v e Our school is located near the、uh, Arisugawa Park in Minami Azabu, and it's for children with mental disabilities. It's a private school. There are 14 private schools 
in Japan. In Tokyo, there is Nihon Loa School for Deaf, and they put cochlear implants for children. And when they become grade second or grade third, they go to the local school. So there's、uh, less and less children as the grade go up. The other one is called Meisei Gakuen, and it's、uh, for the deaf. They have native sign language, and each country has sign language. In Japan, they have the Kaiwa sign language and Japan sign language. Meisei.、Um, They respect the traditional culture, and from year two thousand,、um, now they take the Japan sign language. And there's another school called Asahide Gakuen in Shakuji, Aiku Kai.、Uh, in nineteen thirty four, when the Emperor Emeritus was born. Show、uh, Emperor gave money and the land to build Aikukai, and the purpose was to improve mother and children's situation. Then, because from 1934 to 1945, Japan was heading towards sea、uh, that war, and the nutritious nutrition、uh, situation was not good. And infant death rate was high, so Aikai wanted to do something for that. And from 1939, Aikai thought about improving situation of children with mental disability. So, how should we deal with the disability? How can can mental disability be removed? Those were the issues they thought. And from 1939, the war started. And there was this Tsumori Makoto, who came to think about childcare for children with mental disability, and whether children have disability or not.、Uh, he thought about building up children's character because children were really the treasure of the society, and in our concept. Nurturing means education and caring for children. And one of the characteristic in our school is that,、uh, unlike、um, other schools which have the curriculum, usually schools have like six classes a day, and they have. This curriculum for six years or nine years; those curriculums were all thought by adults, and in general schools they give education in classrooms. However, at our school,、um, children's learning we think is not just unilateral; they are interested in various things ever since the baby is born. Or even when they're in mother's womb,、um, babies are known to play with umbilical cord. So, children love to play in learning. Through play, they encounter with the outside world and themselves. They th- think about the relationship between them. And mother and father, whether they are loved, they test the parents. So we think that play is the most important thing in our school, and we don't decide on what kind of play. When they have disability, they really are serious in playing. What should I do today? So children, when they come to our school. There are infants as well as、uh, children up to grade six. They the as soon as they come to school, they start playing. So they play in their own style, the way they want to. So playing is important, but with parents, 
well, they don't want the children to mess up in the house, so there's limit in the house. And sometimes children are scolded by parents, and parents sometimes they think may, they may have been too harsh with children, and uh, ch parents also uh, learn to be parents. At school, we don't scold or reprimand children. How should we really uh, accept children? That's what we think. And we also uh, want to accept children and even let the children do things they cannot do at home. Once they start something, even if it's troubling, we accept them. So children look at teachers and uh, although children ha may have sour face, children accept their behavior, uh, teachers accept their behavior. And some teachers have anxious look or some teachers are approving, but children know that they are accepted. Also in our school, there are scribbles all over the school. So when they start scribbling or when they start something, we want to accept the behavior as, soon, as much as possible. And children also, they wonder whether what they're doing is okay or not. Once they feel secure, they come to understand what adults want them to do or what the society is like they naturally understand what it means to be in a society and they know that uh, the more time the adults take and the adults accept their pace then they know that um, their behavior is good or not sometimes there is uh, fighting over toys we can tell them the rules, like don't take others' toys or take turns. But when children think about why, that's when the encounter begins. Even the kid who takes others' toys, they feel that they're sorry. Maybe they were not courageous enough to ask for the toy, or they may feel that you know, if but if the teacher says, don't do it, like rubbing salt in the wound, it's not good. We should ask the children, what happened? What did you really want to do? We should not scare the children, but try to understand how the child really felt. And children will understand uh, that adults are trying to understand them, and they take the time to understand them. So in a household, father and mother may have different ideas. Mother may say, why did you buy candy for the child? And the father will say, I just wanted to buy it for the child. So there are two different values. And sometimes the father and mother may have some different opinions. But child is not looked upon negatively. They are accepted and they feel secure. And in schools, through play, they will deepen their confidence and they will feel secure. And they will understand what it means to build relationship with children there are volunteers from Hands on Tokyo. They may take the children to swimming pools or they may sing English songs with children. And children will feel comfortable with others. Through interaction, through singing, they will observe the adults. And they have the ability to observe then they know how to build relationship with others. 
probably our school is the smallest in Japan, but the activity area is so huge. So we need many staffs and volunteers. And so thanks to the volunteers for building the relationship. After the children graduate, go to high school, junior high school, they also, well, our children have an insight into people's nature. And that's because children have their own basis. They have the ability to believe in themselves. Even if a person looks scary, the ch child will understand that this person tries to believe me. And so it, high school teachers would often say, uh, i.e. graduates, they're good at using the um, past time. And also um, children don't need to test teachers. We can go right into the class so they are very quick to build relationship based on trust. When I came to Aiku, that was 30 years ago, there were still discussions going on whether to give this free liberal education. Is it a good thing for children? However, after children graduate, teachers would say positive things about our graduates. Our graduates don't need to curry favor from others. They don't feel inferior. Sometimes they have fight, but they can make up any time. And they know that they can correct their failures or mistakes. Another thing, um, at Aiku, we really put uh, emphasis on art, dance, choreography, art, and music. These art activities have special um, teachers, and they are as important as other subjects. Ever since humankind came in existence, Art is something that mankind have cherished. So any man or women, regardless of race or age, um, people have originality or creativity. So we don't give any curriculum in art. And also, the younger the children are, they have good ears. So we must give them real, authentic music. Children can play our grand piano or play with drums at any time they like. So there's no curriculum. Children... They, they can try anything and um, children play with th their own instinct and the adults just look and um, look at the children, what they do. Sometimes if children go too far, of course, we must uh, observe very well. But anyway, children understand that they are very respected and then children also listen to us and also respect the teachers. So that's our school. Can I go on? I think the time is almost up. Sorry. Oh. Can I say this at the end? Um, uh, I think our schools and other schools and uh, the families, I think they are all connected. 
and we have to take the time and we have to come up with interpretation. We have volunteers and staff. They spend the time with our children and these, all these people who come in relationship with children, they have different views of children. We respect those views. And children are very unique in existence. And children always wonder whether they are respected in the relationship, whether they are loved by others. And children, they are running and they are um, creating their own lives. Nobody is ahead of them, all of us. And sometimes they feel lonely or isolated, but they must keep on running. Sometimes they will fall or they might um, stop running. And if they, there are always people who will lend hands. Maybe it's through schools, but anyway, they feel that there are helping hands and there are people who will push their back, encourage them. Right now, this um, loneliness, uh, facing loneliness has become a big issue. We have COVID, we have wars, but even when we don't uh, those things are not visible. We are all connected and there are always people who will encourage us. And I think uh, this, this is also an opportunity to um, see that. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. I hope we have more of these opportunities in the future. So I hope you will invite other people to have this kind of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. So do you have any questions for Oba-san? Oha-san? Well, thank you. You've... Um, told us a lot of things and I think you've said everything you said it all so now let's go on to the next speaker now we have from NPO Special Olympics Tokyo uh, Functional Development Program Manager Yoshia Suhino Please, Mr. You know. So, um, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, I would like to share the screen with you first and foremost. So, a uh, Special Olympics Japan. So, among the people who have part are participating, um, we see the coaches and people who participate in the program and uh, the people who are called athletes uh, who are children and, and also grown-ups are participating. So uh, I will talk based on that premises. So basically, this is not a program for a athlete. Uh, so the people who would like to volunteer, um, this is a presentation for the people who would like to become volunteers not for athletes. So Special Olympics uh, Japan Tokyo, MDP, uh, hands-on is supporting us fervently. And they are probably among all the, the oldest uh, contributors to our organization. So the moment hands-on was founded, uh, they have uh, uh, supported us and the Special Olympics Japan. So Special Olympics is an we, we call it Special Olympics Japan Tokyo. Uh, people who have intellectual disabilities is an international sports organization that delivers various sports training and athletic competition opportunities to demonstrate the results of year-round training to the people with intellectual disabilities. So it is a sports organization. 
that is our category that we fall into. So Special Olympics Japan is, is Special Olympics is a really big thing. So uh, it all began when Eunice Kennedy Shriver invited uh, children with intellectual disabilities to the backyard of her house in Rockville, the state of Maryland in June in 1962. It was a day camp and it's it was that Kennedy family. So uh, athletic meet, uh, we, we do uh, athletic competition opportunities and our athletes, the children, the participating uh, athletes, we have this universal oath, uh, which is uh, expressed in a common language, and uh, it's it's in English language. It says, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. So at the SON, if you translate this, it means we will do our best. We will strive our best to aspire for victory. Even if we cannot win, please give us the courage to uh, to hack it, to strive. So this is like the oath by the athletes, a universal one. And we're, we're a sports organization. So like the principal of Aiku, Gaku, Aiku School said that um, it's not really child care, but um, it's for the, the uh, daily sports uh, where we want to cheer up the uh, people with dis intellectual disabilities. And what is our mission? Our mission is to provide year-round sports training and athletic competition in a variety of Olympic-type sports for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. These events provide continuing opportunities to the participating athletes to develop physical fitness and demonstrate courage, experience joy, and participate in a sharing of gifts, skills, and friendship with their family, fellow athletes, and local people. And this is a consistent contribution effort. So maybe somewhere in Japan or somewhere in the world, the program takes place some, some place in the world. Today, it's, it's a Saturday today. So um, in Tokyo, in various places, this program is going on. And let me explain to you about this program, uh, Special Olympics Nippon Tokyo. We have a, a different versions in the different uh, prefecture. Uh, this was founded on October 22, 1994, and now based in Shinjuku Ward. We have, we organize 16 sports programs, six cultural programs, regional tournaments, and athletic competitions. These, um, in Tokyo, uh, this is a regional tournament, and for each, uh, each sport, a athletic competitions are held. And sports programs, what kind of sports programs do we operate in? This may not be a Olympic uh, type sports, bowling and basketball, swimming, comp competitive swimming, track and field, soccer, gymnastics, table tennis, tennis, badminton, and MDP, which I am in charge of, volleyball, uh, winter sports, alpine ski, figure skate, speed skate, floor hockey, and recently, this competitive cheerleading joined the sports program of 16, a cultural program, choir, let's play and sing. I, th I thought they were singing in English, I think. An athlete's gathering, painting, wood carving, ballet exercise. This kind of program is uh, is conducted. So the, the sports in uh, red, Inc., basketball, MDP, and competitive cheer. I think Hands on Tokyo are helping us, and the volunteer people are participating with these uh, programs. There used to be walling, but uh, now this is the or oaring, but um, now it's these three sports. Uh, sorry, bowling, bowling. And uh, to, in order to qualify as an athlete, so if you have an intellectual disability, it, it's quite wide ranging. And there are people who, who fall into the category of what they call gray zone. Uh, so the Special Olympics athletes, athletic competition are people 
who are eight years old or older who have been identified or diagnosed by a specialist to have an intellectual disability, all the way up to grown-ups. It's a uh, daily program, and the athletic competition is is grouping is 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 for the people people who can be eligible uh, is for the group of uh, people who have disabilities. So uh, in order to be equitable to the rest of the world, uh, as the where the athletic competition is going on, that is why there is a definition of this group. So, but however, daily uh, training and day-to-day -day, uh, training and uh, those children right before elementary schools, uh, maybe up to the first graders, uh, these uh, small children, and and it's not uh, quite discernible whether this the individual has a intellectual disability or not. Maybe the uh, specialist has not yet, professionals did not identify that this person having an intellectual disability, uh, or, or the parents are still hesitant to have their children diagnosed properly. So let's have a such athletes uh, to participate in certain programs. They come to the cultural programs or MDP, uh, motor development programs, and these this can be offered to the children without any identification or diagnosis by the professional. Uh, so uh, let me introduce what this MDP program is all about, Motor Development Program is about. MDP, let me showcase what we do. MDP is, uh, is designed for young athletes elementary school pupils and principal enrolled in SO and Tokyo who find it difficult to participate in sports training programs designed for athletes in general. And what we do is uh, athletes will enjoy as they learn basic physical movements, which can be applied to any kind of sports. We provide customized programs depending on the different development phases of the athletes in order to deliver various opportunities to play sports. And we do this MDP program every week. Uh, the program is repeated year round so that the athletes will digest the learnings gradually. We also help the athletes little by little to develop their social skills, especially those children are still young, very young. So they want to play basketball, but they don't even know the rules of the basketball they can't comprehend and japanese people like to queue line up but uh, wait to, and in in line uh, to uh, learn that kind of rules uh, would will be experienced by these children as much as possible so so that this would be a stepping stone uh, the mdp program is a stepping stone to uh, to prepare the children to go on to the next step. So how this uh, program goes, a typical day, let's look at a typical day. So uh, at the, the reception, you enter the gymnasium and you have to show the ID to the receptionist and they're, they're young children. So athletes coming to the reception and they, they don't smoothly pull out an ID card and show it to the receptionist. But uh, we take care of uh, small children of grade school all the way up to grown-ups. So, and we play sports throughout our lives, all through our lives. So we want to prepare these children uh, to become a full-fledged athlete. So we want those young athletes to pull out an ID to, to prepare themselves to understand that a day starts in the gymnasium as of now. And what comes next is um, we pull out a whiteboard and and young, if, it, if you are able-bodied, um, you can just convey, communicate verbally. We'll do this and that and that. And you you don't, if, if, if you, the instructions are not given until the last minute, that's fine too. But um, these children have uh, intellectual disabilities. So they receive the information visually. Otherwise uh, you cannot, they cannot go forward. And all of a sudden, if you change a program uh, in the last minute, at that point, they just break down and they cannot, they're frozen. So some kind of reset, resetting activities are necessary for these children. 
So, so we explain the the schedule or agenda of that day using the whiteboard, and then we do the towel stretch and rhythm ryth rhythmic uh, OM uh, calisthenics, patch pachman calisthenics. Uh, so you pair up with the volunteer to do this uh, uh, physical motion. We can't really use the uh, gymnasium right now due to the COVID-19 situation. But uh, so uh, physical motions to the music and uh, to develop social uh, skills and, and we're a sports organization, we need to teach the children rules. And so they get to learn uh, those rules as they enjoy, as they play. So uh, musical chairs, uh, we call it the uh, island getting game. So when they listen to the music, when the music is on, you walk around. And uh, and when the music stops, you grab one of the mattresses instead of chairs. So, so we want them to understand the rules. So we do this uh, initiative uh, over and over again. And this is the same program throughout the year. So gradually the children get the knack of it. And then we do this Pecori night. It's a, it's a short break. So all of the programs, uh, they are processed as within less than 10 minutes. So you switch on to the next program one after another. Uh, number seven and number eight, uh, we're, we're a sports organization, we're a sports group. So we do this interval sprint nine minutes. So you have to continue running for nine minutes. and and the music is always uh, played and the music's uh, pitch changes and then there's uh, a short breaks so over and over again. So you listen to the music and and do this physical movement and you listen to the music, which is a cue to to rest. And and it, it takes time for the athletes to digest this, but um, they watch the volunteers uh, do what they do. So they, they imitate the, the volunteers and uh, the longest program is number eight, uh, the medium-sized uh, auditory uh, gymnasium. When they can, we can use this big one, big gymnasium. We do mini soccer, uh, partial functions programs uh, is executed for mini soccer and basketball uh, so that this could be a stepping stone to the next program. And when we use the small uh, gymnasium, uh, we do this MDP program, it's circuit. Uh, we do the hopscotch balance beam, vaulting box and mattress. Uh, all these, uh, it, it's a circuit of all these uh, hopscotch and these things. And hopscotch, uh, if you have an intellectual disability, it's, it's very difficult to do this motor skills. The, there's, they look at the footprints and uh, they jump and the uh, right right foot uh, left foot must uh, fall into this uh, foot drawn foot prints so you visually observe it and uh, and enter into a physical motion and why do you jump uh, that kind of recognition is difficult for them to digest so but if you do it over and over again um, they they grow quickly and, and they almost perform hopscotch as well as we do and then the radio calisthenics and that's the end of the program so we gather again in front of the whiteboard you see the children gathered in the photo so they uh, confirm what they did today and, through the schedule. And this is the a series of MDPs uh, program. And so if you want to be a volunteer for this uh, MDP, uh, what kind of uh, options are available? And Hands-On has been supporting us uh, for a long time. So uh, various methods are possible. Special Olympics uh, Tokyo, or uh, you first uh, register yourself as a volunteer, sign up as a volunteer sports program, cultural program. Uh, you can participate in any kinds of program that we host and volunteer programs. You may, you have to uh, attend a, a, this session uh, to understand the athletes. So what kind of volunteer programs are available uh, can also be seen in this website. And, and another program, which Hands on Tokyo is supporting us. Um, after you enter the volunteer registration, uh, the, you want to uh, 
you can choose a day that matches your uh, your schedule and to become an MDP coach um, each program has a coach Special Olympics Nippon Tokyo or as you register yourself as volunteer and six times we want you to uh, participate in the MDP program for six times and then um, so sorry to raise the uh, the hurdle the barrier but it's not it's not quite that high um, and you also have to attend this training to uh, become a coach uh, and then you can be there this path is conducive to becoming a coach for the MDP program. So um, that was a quick walkthrough. Uh, Special Olympics Nippon, uh, elementary school children all the way to grown-ups. Um, some of them are in their 30s, 40s, or 50s. Uh, even if you have a intellectual disability, um, they can perform as, a, as you have to uh, play with them on, on weekends and uh, sports they, they can perform sports throughout your life through uh, in, enjoying through play and this kind of activities we roll out throughout the world so we welcome all of you to become uh, a volunteer and uh, also have contacts with the uh, athletes uh, in all kinds of programs thank you for your kind attention we look forward to seeing you thank you for that so, does anybody have any questions to Hino-san? Thank you for the presentation. And uh, the MDP, Motor Development Program, uh, 16th of April, which is a Saturday uh, in the morning hours, there will be a workshop and an on-site activity there. So uh, please do join us. And tomorrow, which is 3rd of April, and also 29th of April, it's a holiday, Arakawa River Plain Aid Forum, uh, it's a uh, cleanup of Arakawa River Basin uh, will take place. So please do show up. And so uh, you can make sign up through the web calendar of Hands on Tokyo. So we look forward to seeing you there. So let's take a screenshot among all our, ourselves. Those who uh, can uh, unmute their video, please do so. So, uh, screenshot, please. <laughs> so, Sachiko san proposed, um, let's, let's uh, hold your hands like this. Anno san, another screenshot, please. So are we okay? Are we all set? Okay, it was well taken. Thank you. So uh, thank you for participating today. We, so from here on, the Global Volunteer, Global Volunteer Month kickoff event will start. So uh, we look forward to enjoying so, the volunteer activities. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.